Hi everyone, I am Sean from Bid for Assets. Bid for Assets hosts two different types of auctions for the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office, tax foreclosure auctions and mortgage foreclosure auctions. In this video, we will be covering how to participate in mortgage foreclosure auctions. An additional video covering tax foreclosure auction procedures will be available in the description below. The first thing you'll need to do to participate in these or any of the auctions available on Bid for Assets is register for a free Bid for Assets account if you haven't done so already. There are no monthly fees required to maintain your account. It is completely free and the registration process should only take a few minutes. To begin, you'll want to go to the top navigation bar here on Bid for Assets and select sign up. From there, you will be prompted to provide an email address and to create a password. That password will be what you use to log into your Bid for Assets account as well as confirm your bids. So be sure to make it something that you feel confident you'll remember. From there, you will need to provide some basic contact information, confirm your phone number, and finally log in to your email account and confirm the email address that you've placed on file to complete the registration. Bid for Assets has a detailed video walking you through every step of this process. You can access that video by going to bidforassets.com slash videos. You will see here that we've got many videos walking you through the various steps of a Bid for Assets auction, including registering for an account. So once you've created your account, the next thing that you'll want to do is visit the relevant landing page for Philadelphia Sheriff Sales on Bid for Assets. You can do this in a few ways, depending on if you're trying to access tax foreclosure auctions, mortgage foreclosure auctions, or both. The quickest way to access both sales from the Bid for Assets homepage is to go over here towards the left underneath of specialty channels and select Philadelphia Sheriff Sales. Doing this will bring you to this landing page displaying a message from Philadelphia Sheriff Rochelle below. Below that, you'll find the option to select either tax foreclosure auctions or mortgage foreclosure auctions. For this video, we are looking at mortgage foreclosure auctions, so we'll go ahead and we'll select that option. This is the sales main landing page. The first thing that I want to draw your attention to here is the display up top, which says sales date. Philadelphia will typically host one mortgage foreclosure sale on bid for assets per month. And selecting the sales date tab will display a list of upcoming auction dates. Selecting one of those dates will enable you to view a list of properties slated to go to auction on that date. So I select September 14th. I'm now looking at a list of properties that are scheduled to go to auction September 14th. Once you've selected the auction date that you want to view properties for, you can navigate through the list of properties here using the arrows at the bottom of this section to jump from page to page. The arrows at either end here will take you to the last page on the list or back to the first page on the list respectively. You notice that a lot of these auctions are marked as stayed. An auction that's been stayed has been canceled. You might also see auctions that are marked as postponed, which means they're still scheduled to move forward, but at a later sale date. If you select the show available auctions only box here in the top left-hand corner, it will ensure that you only see auctions that are still scheduled to move forward. You'll see it cut down on the list significantly when I selected that box. To the right of the property list, you'll see that you can search by book slash rip, by OPA, by auction ID number, or by keyword. Keyword, for example, if you were looking for a particular property on Main Street, you could enter the word Main into the keyword search box, and it would filter down the auction list to only display auctions which contain that word. Another way to quickly view lists of properties available for any given sale date 
is to download them as an Excel spreadsheet. You can do this by selecting the download property list display here up top next to the sales date tab. You have to be logged into your account to access this feature. Just like before, selecting the show available auctions only tab ensures that you only view a list of properties that is still scheduled to move forward by removing any auctions that have been stayed or postponed. You just select download and it will generate the list for you. Let's see here. You will see that the property list gives you a lot of useful information in this spreadsheet. It gives you the property's OPA, it, where it can, it will give you the property's address, all useful information to have when doing your due diligence ahead of the sale. Let's head on back to the auctions main page. Now, all Philadelphia sheriff sale auctions will require a deposit to qualify for participation. For mortgage foreclosure sales, that deposit will be $5,000. A couple things to note about this deposit. First, keep in mind when submitting a deposit that each auction date is treated as its own event and will require its own single deposit to participate. So if you wanted to participate in Philadelphia's September 14th sale, you would only need to send in a single bid deposit and it would qualify you to bid on every single auction opening on September 14th. However, if you wanted to bid on auctions in Philadelphia's October 5th sheriff sale, you would need to submit a new bid deposit for that new sale date. So the rule is one bid deposit for one sale date, but that deposit allows you to bid on every auction opening on that date. Another thing to note is that if you submit a deposit, but you end up either not bidding or not winning any property, you will have the option to transfer that deposit over to Philadelphia's next sheriff sale. You can do this after the auction directly from your bid for assets account by going to the My Bid Deposit section. So how do we actually submit a deposit? Deposits should be sent directly to bid for assets and there are two methods available for you to do this. They are certified check and wire transfer. To get started, just go to the auction page for a property that you would like to bid on. And one of the first things that you'll see on the auction page is an orange button which reads, click here for deposit instructions. And select that to initialize the process of submitting your deposit. Again, you'll wanna be logged into your bid for assets account when you do this. Before you obtain instructions for submitting your deposit, Note that you'll be prompted to provide your social security number in compliance with the U.S. Patriot Act if this is your first time submitting a deposit with Bid for Assets. After that, you'll be prompted to provide pre-vesting information detailing how you'd like any potential property that you've won to be titled. Once Bid for Assets receives your deposit, it will be processed and you will be notified via email and your Bid for Assets message center once you've been cleared to bid. Now, if you win an auction, your deposit will be applied to your final payment. But if you don't win, as I mentioned before, you will have the option to transfer it over to Philadelphia's next sheriff sale. If you choose not to do this, then your deposit will be refunded to you via a principal e-check that will come to the email address linked to your Bid for Assets account within 10 business days after the auctions close. If you've still got questions about bid deposits, Bid for Assets has another video tutorial walking you through every step of submitting a deposit for a public auction. Now, let's take a closer look at an individual auction page from one of these sheriff sale properties and talk a little bit about due diligence. The auction page will have any available information that the sheriff's office can provide to assist you with your due diligence. Neither the sheriff nor bid for assets will have any additional information 
on the condition of the property or its title, including whether the property is free of any liens. It's very important that you complete your own due diligence before bidding on a property, including the condition and value of the property, as well as any relevant information on the property's title status. Both the Sheriff's Office and Bid for Assets would recommend that you consult with an attorney before purchasing property from a sheriff sale. Bid for Assets CEO led a webinar on how you can research tax sale properties, and much of the information in that video will be relatable and helpful for your sheriff sale due diligence. You can find that video once again with the rest of our tutorials by going to bidforassets.com slash videos. Find it scrolling down here, due diligence, a guide to researching tax sale properties with Bid for Assets CEO. Again, that's a valuable resource that we'd recommend that you take advantage of. Looking a little bit more closely at this auction page, you'll notice that it displays a minimum bid of $6,500. So where does that number come from? Well, in a Philadelphia mortgage foreclosure auction, the sheriff's office sets the minimum bid, factoring all of the costs associated with bringing the property to auction. Now, in addition to this minimum bid, attorneys assigned to individual properties in the sale will also be factoring in their own costs to set what's called an upset price. And finally, each auction will have what is called a reserve price. The reserve price is a hidden amount that bidding must reach in order for the auction to result in a third party sale. If the reserve price is not met, then even if the auction has bids, nobody will win the property. If an auction's reserve is met, you will see it indicated here on the auction page. This display marked reserve will switch over from reading not met to met. The reserve price for these auctions will be a combination of the sheriff's cost and the upset price set by the attorney. You will not know what the reserve price is, but you will be able to see whether or not it has been met throughout the auction. Once again, here on the auction page, you'll see the display. If the reserve price is met, this will change from saying not met to met. Something to keep in mind when thinking about these figures and terms is that you should ideally try to already know the maximum amount that you're willing to bid on a property before it opens for bidding, especially given that you will not know the reserve price for an auction unless it's actually met. This is why individual research is so important when participating in sales of this type. So once the auction opens, you can go in and start bidding. There are two ways that you can go about doing this. You can either bid along manually in small increments of $1,000, or you can go in and place the maximum amount that you are willing to pay for a property and let that serve as your proxy bid. In that case, Bid for Assets automated system would bid up to that maximum on your behalf. Our system will ensure that you do not need to bid more than is necessary to reach the upset price and to beat the second highest bidder by one bid increment. In other words, placing your proxy bid is similar to having a number in your head when you go to a live auction. And our system will bid up to that amount on your behalf, but not over it. Additionally, the proxy bid system will default to the lowest amount that you can bid while still meeting the reserve whenever it can. So, Let's say that this auction had a reserve price of $8,000 and I place a proxy bid of $12,000. Our system would default to a bid of $8,000, ensuring that I win the auction for the reserve price and no more. At this point, my bid would only increase if other people bid on the auction and an increase was necessary to, be, to maintain my status as the high bidder. I want to reemphasize that if you are the high bidder on an auction, but the reserve or the upset price is not met, you will not be purchasing the property. You will need to bid until the reserve price switches from reading not met to met and be the high bidder when the auction closes 
in order to win the auction and purchase the property. So with all that in mind, let's talk a little bit about post-auction procedures and settlement terms. An auction settlement terms outline the amount of funds due and the timelines for payment in an auction. Throughout the lead up to a sale, an auction settlement terms will be accessible both on the sales general landing page, which we'll look at in a second, and on every individual auction page. Here at the bottom, you'll see where it reads settlement requirements. We strongly encourage you to familiarize yourself with the settlement terms for an auction, as you must have the funds available to meet the payment timelines outlined in them, or you will be in default and forfeit your deposit. If a bid is placed within the final five minutes of the auction, an overtime bidding system will kick in. And so what that means is that the clock for the auction will reset to five minutes left, and it will continue to do so each time an additional bid is placed. And the bidding for the auction will not close until five minutes passes without a new bid. Another post-auction function to be aware of is the bidder on deck system. Here's how that works. Should the winning bidder for an auction not pay the remaining balance due on it the day after the sale, second day after the sale has closed, they will be considered in default, as I mentioned. On the following day, so the third day after the sale, the next highest bidder in the auction, or the bidder on deck, will be notified that they have an offer to become the winning bidder. The bidder on deck will then have 24 hours to accept that offer. If they accept, they will then have 15 days from the date of acceptance to pay the total balance due on the property. You can view bidder on deck offers that you've received from your Bid for Assets account, and you will receive an email notification should a bidder on deck offer go out to you. Now, when every single auction in the sale closes, you will be notified whether you've won any of the auctions where you placed the bid via email and in your Bid for Assets message center. If you don't win any auctions, then no action is required on your part unless you want to roll over your bid deposit. As, previous, as previously stated, you can do that from your Bid for Assets account by visiting the My Bid Deposit section. If you still have not received a post auction email alerting you that properties that you've won and at about a half hour past the closing time, it's likely that bidding is still going on. It's likely that those overtime periods that I mentioned are still ongoing. You can also try logging into the My Account page and check your message center for this alert. Like I said, a copy of it will be placed in your message center when the email alert goes out, but only after every auction in the sale has closed, including the factoring in of overtime bidding. Winning bidders will have to fund the remaining 10% of their winning bid plus Bid for Assets 1.5% buyer's premium by the close of business the day after the auction. Your post-auction email will break down this amount for you in detail and provide you wiring instructions for Bid for Assets escrow account. Winning bidders will then have 15 days from the auction's close to fund the remainder of the balance due. And finally, Bid for Assets Deed Wizard tool will confirm your vesting information for the deeds and display settlement instructions for you to complete payment. If you need to change the pre-vesting information that you provided, please contact the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office about submitting an assignment of bid form. Once the 15-day settlement deadline has passed, Bid for Assets will submit all funds and deed vesting or titling information to the Sheriff, and at that point, the county will begin preparing your deeds to complete the sale. So to recap some key points, to participate in a mortgage foreclosure auction on bid for assets with the Philadelphia Sheriff's auction, you were going to want to take the following steps. One, register a free bid for assets account. Two, 
visit the landing page for Philadelphia mortgage foreclosure auctions on bid for assets and select the auction date that you're interested in. Download a list of available properties to determine which ones you would like to bid on. Three, obtain deposit instructions for the auction or auctions that you wish to bid on. Remember that one deposit qualifies you for an entire sale and all of the properties that are available in it. Four, thoroughly research the properties that you intend to bid on and place your bids when the auction opens. Additionally, read the auction settlement terms ahead of the sale and be sure that you have the funds ready to complete the sale on any auction that you win. And finally, five, if you are a successful bidder, follow the instructions in your post-auction email to complete settlement. Remember that public auctions can be complex transactions. So do your due diligence prior to bidding and consult with an attorney ahead of the sale. Bid for Assets is here to help with live customer service available over 40 hours a week. So always feel free to reach out to us by going to bidforassets.com slash contact. You can also obtain our contact information by going back to the top navigation bar of the homepage and selecting the Contact Us button. That will provide you with our customer service team's email address and phone number. Again, you can reach out to us at any time. Until then, we hope this video was helpful for you, and we wish you the best of luck in your next auction on Bid for Assets. Take care.